Before we start, uh, I'm going to give you some, uh, a lot of numbers, etc. So if you want to, to check by yourself everything, uh, please take a look. Everything is on, uh, on my website, so maxpoo.fr slash torch. And you will see usually there is a link with the, the study, etc. And where, where you can find the, the source for uh, all the information I give to you. Uh, Talking about my website, I update my privacy. Sorry, it was the GDPR joke. Um, so yeah, let's come back to why I'm here and why you are here. Progressive web application. Do you remember this phone? It was something like 10 years ago. Yeah, an idea? <laughs> yeah, it's the iPhone 3GS. And where when they present this phone, the, it came out with, the, with this idea that there is an app for that. There is an app for everything. And this, this smartphone came with um, a store. So it's basically able developer to create web application, uh, no, sorry, to create native application for the mobile. Uh, so then I think every company was kind of the same as with internet. Everybody wanted to get a native app. It was um, kind of gold rush. Every, everybody wanted, wanted an app, you know? And so now we are something like 10 years ago. Uh, I think it's interesting to, to see what's, what's happened today in the, uh, in the market of native app. So, uh, my talk started here. I saw, I start to see a lot of, um, a lot of blog posts and they said native app are doomed. I don't fully agree with that, so I will put some quotes. But I think it's interesting to, to see what's, what's going on in the, today in the, the, the market of the native app. And one of the first thing is, well, today in the US, less, or 50% of the user download zero app a month. I don't know about you, but for me, it's kind of the same. Well, I installed the um, Devox app, but otherwise, I don't really install application. I use my browser for almost everything. And when I'm not using my browser, I got my three main applications, and I always use them. Usually, it's you got something to retrieve your emails, you're going to get something to get your uh, social media, and maybe a second social media app. And th there is also uh, a big problem for you if you want to, to make an app, it's to get money with this app. And if you want to make money with this app, I mean, most of the revenue came from the, the main publisher today. So it's, it's difficult. Also, there is, uh, there is a lot of friction if you want to if you want to reach people. So given I want to reach a thousand of people. So on each step for between you want to install the app to the store, etc., you're going to uh, lose something like 20%. So I think now since this screen, they, they, they remove some step, but it's still there. So here at the end, if you want to take 1000 people at the end, you're going to get something like a bit more than 25%. And yeah. Uh, another problem is when, when you don't load the app, I think it's already happened to you a lot, you don't load the app, you test it and say, oh, okay, I don't need it anymore. Um, so, and that's something that happened to me a lot because I used to travel a lot and every month I have to install a new app for the airplane company. And I mean, it's, it's a pity to, to download uh, something like, so here it's, yeah, 30, 30 megabytes. Uh, two months ago, I was in, um, in Canada. I have to download the 80 mega, megabytes application. And the only reason why I download this app is just to show my boarding pass. So I don't really, I don't really need 80 megabytes just for a boarding pass. There is a lot of examples like this. Uh, check on the store. So comparing the web to the native apps, 
it's also really hard if you are building a native app to reach people. The, it's pretty simple. I mean, check how many websites you can visit a day and how many uh, applications you, uh, you are using a day. On your Facebook or whatever social media, you got a link, you click, and you can reach a lot of people just by this. So the, the question now is, OK, so is it the, the end of the, the native app? or Well, I, I don't think so, because people spend a lot of time on the app and not that much on the web. Um, one of the main reasons is the capabilities. If you check on what your smartphone can do, it's awesome. I mean, you got some notification. If I want to go on Google Maps, you're going to say, oh, you are here. You want to go to uh, Krakow, tac, tac, tac. You can go there by using this way, etc. So it's really integrated with, your, with, our, uh, with our phone. And it's not the same with, uh, with the web. So starting from this, some people say, OK, so we got the web. It's really good to, to reach new people. And on the other hand, we got the native app. And it's really complicated to, to reach people, but we can do a lot of things. So could we try to put them on the same level and get the best of the web and the best of the native app? Well, that's something called progressive web apps. Uh, before updating your LinkedIn profile or whatever, keep calm. It's nothing else than a set of rules to follow for your, uh, your existing website to be a progressive web apps. So I'm going to go through these 10 rules and explain you yeah, what we can do. The first one is linkable. Oh. So linkable means for each page, you need to get one link. So welcome to the HTTP protocol. There is nothing new here. I mean, nothing new for, uh, for you if you are already doing some uh, web application. The, the second point is about safety. Uh, when we are using an uh, application on, uh, on our mobile, we believe that they are safe. So we want exactly the same for the web app. You may recognize the locker here. So the locker means HTTPS. Thanks for us. We got something called Let's Encrypt now. So there is no reason not to, to get um, HTTPS. So let's, um, let's Encrypt, just a small uh, summary. Uh, they provide for free uh, certificates. And one day, someone told me, oh, yeah, that's something for a hipster. No, that's not. Uh, I mean, check out all the people who are supporting latent scripts. They are really serious. I mean, Mozilla, we got ICAMA, they are here, by the way, today. And we got Chrome, OVH, Facebook, etc. A lot of application, um, a lot of companies. So yeah, no reason for you not to use uh, HTTPS, even for your localhost when you are developing your uh, web application. The, the third part is, yeah, really simple. It's responsive. So if you don't know what responsive is, check out this, uh, this picture from uh, Stephanie Walter. So content is like water. I'm not going to spend too many time on it. Today, it should be something really basic. There is a lot of CSS framework to allow you to, to get something that can fit properly in, um, in your browser. So for the fourth point, we're going to dig a bit into the, the specificities of the PWA, because for now, it's really basic. So people want something that is like an app. And usually, why we are using application, native application, rather than the web, it's because it feels fast. And people like when everything is fast. Uh, there is also a lot, of, um, a lot of studies, and there is a famous one with uh, Amazon, where they say, how much does it cost uh, a millisecond? There is a lot of tools like this on the web that can allow you to tell, I mean, that can tell you how much you can win just by 
uh, getting uh, a better speed for your web application. And I found out this, this picture on the web. Uh, I'm someone I really like everything related to uh, motorsports, and I was really impressed because this guy, they can change four tires in one Formula One in 2.05 2 seconds, while the average page load for a website is 19 seconds. That's crazy, on a 3G network. That's really crazy. For me, it was the opposite. I mean, if you ask me to change the tire, maybe it's going to be more, something like 20 minutes, so, or maybe more. So yeah, for me, we, we have to do something with the, with the page loading. Why? Because people expect a web page to load in less than two seconds. And after the third second, you're going to lose 50% of your user on each page. So if someone requires three steps, I mean, to buy something, wow, at the end, you're going to get nobody. No, no one's going to buy on your website. So it's mandatory to consider performance at the future. At the future, sorry. So how we can uh, get something more fast? I think we already saw this kind of architecture on the web. Uh, if you are using uh, the social media Facebook, if you are scrolling really, really fast, at some point you will see something like, uh, like this on the, on the left. So they preload the page and they put uh, an empty skeleton. And after, when the data are loaded, we are populating the page. So the user uh, got this feeling that your application is faster. And in fact, the application is faster because you don't need to load everything on the same uh, every time. By using this, George.com reduced their page load by 3.8. Uh, then again, there is interesting blog post on, uh, on, the Google, uh, on the Google blog about this. I recommend you to read it. The, the fifth point is about getting something progressive. Uh, in, the, in the JavaScript world where I'm working, uh, there is some framework today, and they are getting famous because they are progressive, which means we can use this alongside an existing application. Well, it should be the same for your, uh, for your, web, app, uh, for your web app. If you want to use some specificities from your browser, it should not impact everybody, because Believe me or not, there are still people that are using Internet Explorer 7, 8, 9, etc. A few of them, sure, it's going to regress, but there is still uh, some people who are, who are using all browsers or who are using some browser that don't support some feature. It's, it's an example I, I got. So I, I take this screen from uh, my um, Firefox 58. At home, I got a Ubuntu. Here, I got... Um, my company, MacBook Pro. So my, um, my Firefox cannot do the, the payments. And I'm going to show you later uh, oh, what a payment is and how we can do it on the, on the Chrome. On the, I think it's supported today on Chrome and all uh, our operating system. But it's not, on the, not yet, I mean, on Ubuntu. So if you want to add some feature that are not supported yet, well, I think. Uh, Think about everybody. There is with this good website called uh, What Web Can Do Today, and it can tell you, okay, so th for this feature, exactly. So if you want, for instance, to get the NFC on your browser, where well, here it's not used, so maybe it's, you're gonna get something like 20% of the uh, of the world browser of the world population got this. So it can be interesting. The sixth point, it's. We want something fresh. Uh, why? Because our network is not reliable. I don't know about you, but sometimes uh, I'm using my phone, and at some point I have no network. But I still want to use this uh, the one feature or not. For instance, if I'm using uh, WhatsApp, I want to send a message or an email. And if I am in my elevator and there is no network, it says, OK, I copy. You want to send it? But there is no network at the moment, so don't worry, I'm going to send it to you later. And basically, what we want to avoid is this. Uh, some at, sometimes uh, I came home after work, 
and say, okay, now I just want to relax and play on my Xbox. And I got this screen which say, no, not today. I'm sorry, I have an update, so here it's okay, it's 47 megabytes, but sometimes I got a few gigs, and that's so annoying. I mean, in terms of user experience, it's annoying. So what's, what we want to do on the web, we want also to avoid this. And also, uh, I'm sorry for them because they are here today and I really like their app, but I faced this problem uh, months ago. I wanted to use, uh, well, Revolut, which is the, the, the name of my bank, and they say, oh no, uh, you, you have to use the, the lastest version. I say, come on, I don't know the, I don't know it's four days ago. Um, we, we, we got this chance in the web that we don't need to, uh, to annoy people with, uh, with a store on installing, updating, updating, updating apps, so we have to continue to do this. And we're gonna continue to do this. That's a good news for us. So, how can we create uh, an app, a web application that feels as a native app if I cannot install it? Well, s some browsers find um, find uh, find a way to to install an app. So, here is the example of uh, GitHub, which is nothing else than GitHub, but built with Vue.js. I did it on my part-time. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm on Firefox on my, uh, on my personal smartphone. So here I got, you can see here, there is a small house with a plus. So what's happened here, if you probably already saw it. So if I click, I'm going to get this screen. Oh, cool. Do you want to add it to your home screen? I say, yes, I want it. And at the end, you're going to get something like this here. So here it's with Firefox, here it's with Chrome. Chrome recently removed this, uh, this small icon from Chrome. And something interesting, it's not a shortcut. It's a real application, which means if you go on your uh, on Android, if you go on your, uh, on your mobile on the, on the parameter, of your application. You can see this as an application. You can say how many memory does it use, if you allow or not the notification. Why? Because it's, for Chrome, I don't really know how does it work with Firefox, but for now it's only happened with, um, with Android and what I say about the parameters. It's because Chrome gonna create um, an APK or something called a web APK. So, I'm not going to show you how does it work here, but I, I try it on, uh, on um, my macOS. So here, if I install it, here, uh, if I type progressive web apps, yeah, on my, uh, on my browser, it's considered also as a, as a native app, because this slide, the, the slide I built are a progressive web app. So that's why I, just for fun, I install my, uh, I install my slide on my, um, on my Mac OS, and now I can access to it as kind of a native app. Because in Mac OS, it's not completely, completely um, fully supported yet. So now, you're probably wondering, wow, how, how does it work? How come I, I give enough information to the browser to say, oh, I want this in, uh, this application to get installed. Well, just create a, for, a file called uh, manifest.json or webapp.manifest. Uh, and this is, so everything is in JSON, not really complicated. Uh, some parameters here are mandatory, some are not, but is, as everything, if you give more information, more detail, it's gonna get better. I mean, the you, you can specify some, uh, some information and that can be really cool. Uh, so here, as you can see, I, I gave some, a name. I gave also a short name, a set of icons. I didn't show you all the icons, but there is, well, I can show you actually. Uh, if I go and inspect. So if you are using Chrome, they're gonna help you a lot. So here you see on manifest, and you can see all the icons I gave. We can also put some, uh, some theme for the color. 
So it's for the splash screen. I'm going to show you after what a splash screen is. Uh, for the start, there is something interesting here. As you can see, I put um, source equal on screen. It's cool if you are using some uh, tracking tool, because you can say, OK, so I got 5% of my users are using the progressive web app. Uh, display also is, oops. Ah. Yes. Um, display is also interesting here. I put it in full screen, which means I don't want to see the URL bar. It's, I mean, for me, it's really weird because the website, I want to show the, the URL. And I can specify and say, no, don't show it. Or for instance, for my slide, I put it in the, not in the portrait mode, but I force the um, landscape mode. Yeah, thank you. So th there is a lot of option parameter that you, you can put uh, for your web application. And a good usage uh, is what Microsoft did. Uh, so I did not update my presentation because I gave this presentation in Vienna months ago. And I say, progressive web apps are coming to the store, to the official store of your application, so of your browser, uh, operating system, sorry. So if you are on Windows and you want to install, install an app, you go on your store and you can install an app that it seems to be like a, a native app written in C Sharp, Java, whatever, but actually it's a web app. Uh, and it's not wrapped by uh, a browser like some application like Visual Studio Code. No, it's a web app. Uh, so yeah, I put this, this icon with the scientist because for me, I say, okay, it's gonna arrive maybe in September. So it was my plan in my head, but actually it's already here. So today, if you are using um, Microsoft with the, I think it's Windows 10, the, the operating system, the very last one, so there is a store and you can install some uh, native application. So for me, that's something really cool. Another thing which is really cool for you to help you to create privacy web apps is Lighthouse. So Lighthouse, you don't need to install anything because you already got it. It's on your, uh, if you got Chrome, so you, got, you go on here, on Audit, you can see this Lighthouse, and you click on Perform Audit, and you can, you're going to say, okay, I want to test my application for performances, privacy web app. So you select what you want. What you want. It's going to work just for one page. And here is, how oh, does it look like uh, a report? So here, as you can see, I, I, um, so I test the website slide.maxpoo.fr, which is my website, and I, also, I, and I test this slide. Are they progressive web apps compliant? Uh, I got a good, uh, good score, 82. Cool. And so what's, what's, what's missing? Um, oh, I don't redirect HTTP to HTTPS. So you, you can already test if your uh, web application is PWA compliant or not. And for instance, if you are using HTTPS, you're not going to get zero. So that's something really good for you because you, you can start and say, oh, I'm already at 50%. Cool. I can continue. And uh, yeah, I put it there because Lighthouse is not only about PWA, but for accessibility, uh, big practice, performance. It gives you a lot of information. For me, it's a gold mine, this. So if you want to work on some parts, I strongly recommend you to, uh, to do some report for your web application. It just works from one URL. So think about this. Uh, not only check the home page. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. So yeah, this is for, uh, for Lighthouse. Pretty good to uh, tool. Now, you remember I told you that the best way to engage people today is by using, uh, um, what the name, notification. I got a lot of stupid game on my, on my phone, and sometimes I'm wondering why I'm still there. Well, because sometimes they send me some reminders and say, oh, your dragon is level two or whatever. So what, what, what we want to do in the web, we want to do exactly the same. So we want to, to send some notification to the user, and fortunately, is it possible? So here, it's a small example. For instance, if I want to click on the title, oops, I mean full screen. Uh, and 
so I hello notification. No, it's the demo effect. Crap, it's not working. Oh, yeah, no, actually, is it working? Look, here I got some native notification. I don't know why, maybe because I got multiple screen. I don't know why I cannot see here uh, as the, a native application, but today you, you, your, uh, your browser can send to the user a real notification. And here, as you can see, every time I click, I send a notification to the user. So here, it's a bit, it's not really meaningful. But you, you, you can do it. For instance, say, oh, maybe your product is ready, or we just send, uh, I mean, we just deliver your product, or something like this, depend, uh, depend on, your, uh, on your business. So yeah, you can get real, uh, real notification as, uh, as a native app. And if you test this slide on your, uh, on your mobile, uh, you can click, and you get, you're going to get uh, so if you are using Android, an Android uh, notification, or if you are using an iPhone, uh, the notification like in your iPhone, for instance. So yeah, please only ask uh, notification when it's really needed. Uh, Today, it's a bit annoying sometimes in the, when we are visiting websites, say, no, I don't want uh, your, um, your newsletter. No, yes, I agree for the cookie. And now from it can add a new step, the, the notification. So fortunately, Google is going to start uh, to put some malice for website that puts notification uh, on, the, on the home page, on the page loading. So only ask them when needed. And there is also some good usage I saw in some websites. This. You can just say, oh, I want notification for this, but not for this. It's better for your user and for everybody. Uh, something other cool that is coming is the, the web payment API. Um, again, on my smartphone, sometimes I can buy stuff. And it's really simple if you are using game or whatever, because everything is connected to your um, um, Apple Pay, Android Pay, etc. So what they want to do, they want to do exactly the same for the browser, to reduce all the friction we got today on the, the payments. So how does it work? It's still in draft, so that's why I put this emoji. And it's only working for now in a few browsers. Chrome for sure, and there is another one. I don't remember which one. So if, for instance, if you want to get the last test iPhone X for only 10 euro, click on this button. And you're going to get this, uh, this form, which is a Chrome form. It's, I did not create it. And here, I just fill some data, like the original price. I put 1,000 USD. And because I really like you guys, I put you a 990 euro uh, reduction. And at the end, it's going to be um, a $10. So if you want to get this phone, just fill the information on the payment. There is another thing where you can put your address, and you're going to get this phone. There is probably a bit a small error. So. <laughs> Another thing is the um, Web Share API. So I'm not going to show you how does it work on, my, on the Mac, because it's not working. It's only working for now on mobile. But if you click on, uh, on this button on your phone, you're going to get a similar screen. So something cool today in some app, you can share a picture or whatever to one of your friends through another application. So the idea behind this is to create exactly the same. So here it's the one example I click, and I were able to send the link to Twitter or all the application I'm using on my phone. The very last point is the biggest for me. It's where you're going to lose some hairs, probably. It's the connectivity independence. The idea here, we want to remove these dinosaurs. Uh, from the web. So that was my reaction when I saw this. Say, wow, how is it possible? I mean, since I'm young, I learned that a website is internet. So if there is no internet, no, there is nothing. It's not going to work anymore. Well, it's not only about being offline. It's also about the, the resilience, the, the network resilience. Because check this map. Um, where here it's, we are in Poland here, so it's not the best network. So I come from, uh, probably recognize my French accent. 
I'm from there, but don't think it's that green because the, the network, it's, oh, sorry, I forget. It's the, the, a map for the world connectivity. So if it's green, you got a good network. If it's red, it's not good. Uh, so yeah, I'm from, I'm from France, but yeah, unfortunately, when I'm in my parents' house, I'm still not able to see uh, a YouTube video in HD. So there is still some place, and even in, uh, in San Francisco Bay, there is still some places in the world that we have a really low network. And we can also think about all the South America. We can also think about uh, Africa or some country in India or, I mean, everywhere. So yeah, believe me or not, but today in the world, 45% of the world connectivity is still in a 2G network. So if you are testing your website on an iPhone X, on the Wi-Fi, on your pretty good Wi-Fi, you are far away from the reality, really far away. Uh, I'm talking about the, the, the network, but also just, just for you, the, the average price for a phone, the, a mobile, it's 200 euros. So yeah, your iPhone X is not the standard. So if you want to test it, buy a 200 euro phone and test, or even cheaper. So yeah, we, we want to make websites resilient, network resilient. So what's, what's the magic, what's the trick? Here is the web page. If I want to access to a web page, I have to reach a network. Nothing new. So some people add something called a service worker. A service worker is a kind of uh, internal proxy on your browser. It's on the browser side. And this um, kind of proxy, because it's not only this. That's why I say this. It got a cache. And that's something that we're going to use. We're going to use for what? Well, to store your, uh, all your assets, a picture. Maybe if you want to, to show your, uh, your website, maybe you're not going to need to load again the logo. Because, I mean, Amazon, the logo doesn't change every morning. So there is some information that we can put on the, on the cache. And for this, there is a lot of uh, strategy. I'm going to get quick with, uh, with this because there is a lot of strategy. If you want to dig into this, I would strongly recommend you to read the offline cookbook written by J. Carl Chibald, which is a pretty amazing guy. So here, for instance, it's a really basic one. So it says, I want to reach the cache first. So I'm loading uh, an asset, for instance, the JavaScript of my file or an image. And I say, I'm gonna, for this picture, I want first the cache. The cache, the cache, the cache. If you can find this in the cache, OK, go on the network. So there is also the opposite. On the network first, if there is no network, OK, doesn't matter. I can take on the cache. Uh, and there is some other strategy. Then, for instance, I really like this one is cache, then network. So you load the data from the cache. At the same time, there is one request is going to the network. It takes the, it take the, the data. You check, is it the same? Oh no, it's not the same. Okay, so I'm gonna send it to the user, and in the meantime, the user can already read your article. And if you change one typo or something like this, it's gonna change, and it's gonna be kind of transparent for the user. There is the other one; it's pretty similar, etc. So, how are we gonna do this? Well, it's browser side, so JavaScript. This is the easy way to cache everything. But I don't know about you, but I don't really like this, and I don't really want to annoy you with uh, code, and mostly with JavaScript code, because maybe most of you are not familiar with JavaScript. So that's one of the really last parts we're going to see uh, with JavaScript. Fortunately, uh, the, the team from Google created uh, a tool called Workbox. So in Workbox, it simplifies everything well you still need to be familiar with uh, regular expression. So here, it's a small example. So for instance, on my website, every HTTP calls to that are going to https.api.gitem.com, uh, whatever, for this, I want to apply the network's uh, first strategy. For me, when I saw this, I say, OK, so now I'm using Workbox and nothing else. I mean, I'm not going to write it in uh, in JavaScript, any, I mean, in the, 
I'm going to use this abstraction layer because it's really powerful. And when I say really powerful, is we can also do stuff like this. So here on the first line, we say it's a regular expression, another way to do it in uh, JavaScript. So I say everything that ends with JPEG, GIF, uh, SVG, whatever. So for this, I want to apply the strategy cache first. I'm going to put it in the cache called uh, image. I want to store a maximum of 60 images and for a duration of 30 days. So we, we can really do, uh, we can do a lot of things like this. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, th there is a lot of details here. So um, that the way I manage my, uh, my cache for, uh, for my PWA, and uh, it's work really nice. So yeah, we can check everything on also on the website if you are using some analytics tools such as Google Analytics, they're going to send you some kind of templates because no one really likes the regular expression where well, I'm talking about me. 11 points, single page application. No, I'm joking. Unfortunately, there is a lot of people in the web. Uh, they say, oh, if you want to do a progressive web app, you have to do a single page application. No, it's wrong. And um, that's something good because building an SPA, it's really complicated from my point of view. Um, okay, so now you, sh you say, okay, I got a good overview of what a progressive web app is. And you're wondering probably, okay, but who did that? Who, who already say, okay, I'm going to switch to a progressive web app? And um, is there is some, any feedback from the major companies? Well, yes, there is. The first one is Twitter. I don't know if you remember, but years ago, Twitter say, now we're not going to support iOS uh, application anymore. For me, it was one of the first thing that there is still something wrong in the, in the native app. I mean, for this business and this specific case only. Uh, the, it's iOS. It's not the, uh, you still have it on your, uh, on your phone. It's just on the, on the laptop, they remove it. So why, why did they remove it? Because, well, they did it in the web. Uh, it's called Twitter Late. Uh, and they saw that people, by using this privacy web app, see more page than uh, the previous app. They use more the app by tweeting more. And they come back more often. So for them, it was a really positive uh, experience. Another experience, it's Forbes. Uh, I say, people stay longer, they scroll more, so they're, they're using more the application, sorry. Fortunately for us, and maybe not for, for we, but the, we can see more um, advertising, so for them it's more revenue, more business. Um, and I think that one of the most interesting for me is Pinterest. So they did uh, the same, they completely rebuilt the, their application. So they saw that people use more the, more the, um, they consume more this net, uh, this progressive web app, they generate more advertising, etc. And after they say, okay, now let's compare to, uh, to the native app. And they find out that they kind of reach the same level. So people, if you are using um, the web or if you are using the native app, f for them it's kind of the same because you're going to use this in the same way, you're going to generate kind of the same, uh, same revenue. So it's a really, really good um, feedback from Pinterest. Also, if you want to try it, the best thing I recommend you is to try it by yourself. There is some, a, a lot of example on the web. Flipkart is the, the first one, is the, um, the kind of Amazon for the um, Indian markets. It's really good because if you are offline, all the products you didn't saw are, so if you didn't load the information for one product, it's going to be gray. But if you already saw the product, it's colorful. So you can click on, uh, on, this, uh, on this article and get some details. So for me, it's one of the best experience offline I saw so far. Um, Google Maps, I'm going to show you if I got time, uh, a short demo. Um, this one, I forgot the, the name of this social media. I don't really like it. Uh, in, in, Instagram, yeah. Uh, I, I don't really like this, uh, this social media, but I, I try the PWA, and I say, wow, is it uh, a web app? Th there is something funny I did. Uh, I, I put this app on my screen, 
alongside with the, the native app. I shuffle them, and after try to uh, try to understand, try to check, or to guess, sorry, try to guess which application is the native one and which one is the, the web one. It's going to be a bit complicated. Um, so you got Starbucks. It's also interesting because you can, uh, you can use geolocalization. I put uh, Tinder uh, because uh, there is a really good blog post by Adios Mani on, uh, uh, on the Google website where they explain their experience so far with the PWA and how they manage performance. So if you want to learn more about performance, check out this. And um, Twitter lights, I already talked about it before. So now let's summarize. What's a definition of the PWA? So, so far, this is my definition. This is a web app, and this is a PWA. So it's way cooler for me. It's better. But uh, it's not really professional. So let's take another definition. Uh, and propose you the, the one from Alex Russell, which is the father of the PWA, uh, a Google engineer. So for him, a PWA, a PWA, a privacy web app, is nothing else than an ex a website that uses the correct vitamin. What these vitamins are? A privacy web apps, they must be fast. They must be integrated. So fast, uh, use the cache as much as you can. Integrated uh, because they are using geolocalization or all this stuff we got on, uh, on our browser. They are reliable. We want to trust them. So that's why the service worker I showed you before, if you are not on HTTPS, you're not going to get it. It's unavailable. The web payment API I show you. I did not understand because my website doesn't redirect HTTP to HTTPS. So I was on HTTP, not on HTTPS. And I could not see the button. I say, oh, what's going on? And I saw on my console, I say, no, you cannot. We don't want to show you this because you are not on HTTPS. So they protect also the user, and that's something good. And the last one, it's engaging. We, were, we need to engage more users by using some stuff like notification. So let's, let's back on the, on the first contract we got. So remember, we got here, here the, the, the native app, and here a classic web app. The idea was to bring them in the same level so today, did we reach this point? I don't really know. I, I don't really know. I, I would say no. We, we are not in the same level. But today, they, they did a great, great, great job. Um, it's going really well for the web. So there is still relevant for your business, maybe, to continue in the native app. But if you are starting a new business, maybe it's not relevant at all to employ engineers that going to build um, an application for iOS, another team for Android, and another team if you are still supporting uh, other, um, other mobile. So for this, for PWA, you can also reach uh, people that are using BlackBerry, people that are using Microsoft, etc. So you can reach almost everybody for me, and that's something good. So yeah, today, I would say we are not, not yet uh, in the same level, but it's going, uh, it's going really fast, really, really fast. Since three years on the Google I.O., they are talking about progressive web apps. And when I saw the difference between the talk from the year uh, minus one, it's just incredible. So the, if, if this kind of company, uh, Google, for instance, are pushing a lot, it's for some reason. Thank you. I think I got five minutes remaining, so I can get some questions. But before the question, I just want to show you an example. Uh, when I was using um, progressive web apps with the Google Maps. So here, I click on the app. And this, this is the, what we call the, the splash screen. So I try it with my phone. It's a OnePlus 5T with Chrome. So here, I got the, the splash screen. So in the manifest.json, they say we want the color to be, to be white. This is the name of the app. And this is an icon. And it's going to generate a splash screen, a loading screen. But it's called a splash screen. And here, cool, it can locate, it, it can locate me because I turn on the, I switch on the uh, geolocalization on my phone. So here I'm in, uh, in, in Ireland, in Dublin, where I'm living. And it's a web application on my phone. 
and here, so yeah, I, I can check out the map. And now I say, okay, find me a good pub, a good pub near me. Boom, you're gonna say this. Okay, cool. Oh uh, yeah, let's see the brazen head. Up, oh, it's loading, and I can see the review. Brazen head, which is the oldest pub in Dublin, by the way. So, as you can see, it's it's really fast. Uh, we can use it as a native app, and guess what? It consumes less and less memory. Uh, I don't remember the exact numbers. I, I got it on my backup slide. Yeah, the PWA consumes 205 kilobytes on my phone, while the native app consumes 193 megabytes. So for all the country like Africa, etc., or if you are on the slow network, don't use the, the native app. Use uh, the PWA. It's gonna consume less um, less data, and even when you are using the when you are using the app. So yeah, that the, the short demo I wanted to show you.